I want to thank the organizer for giving me the opportunity to present my talk. This is the land of Ohio. This ongoing project, I'm still collecting the words. I write first paper on the possibility of integrating the theory of morphological computation and mecha mechanistic theory of computation. And now I try to try to develop more some kind of account of the specificity of the uh, uh, role of the body in cognition, but when cognition is um, due from the perspective of computational theory. Uh, computation theory. So my work is in the area of embodied cognition and I move from this field and try to find something in the area of computation, the area of information processing, biology, and many, many others, and make some uh, conclusions about it. This is a sketch and so on in my talk. And then, uh, yeah, the, the, the most basic idea is I don't want to compare uh, that this was in many papers, the embodied view of cognition with disembodied view of cognition, but rather come, try to find the influence of the body on cognition and computation process and the right cognition, comparing different kinds of embodiment of this, this is a different morphological system. This is my starting point. Starting point. I will not develop it in my presentation. Okay. So I start with them saying something about difference making, which what must make a difference for difference making. And then I uh, base my idea from from Finnish uh, philosophers, uh, Petr Yelkowski and Korekowski, and then developed by uh, Samuel Dorn, and now he's his name is uh, Reza. Uh, and they applicate some ideas from Van Kassen and Wilton and then uh, Woodward on the contrasted view of explanation, which is explanation is explaining the question why E rather than F, composed by the three. Cool P and index K is error, but PT is topic, X is conscious class and R is relevance relation. And P on then say that explanation eventually characterized by answer to the question of the form why fact what in the foil where the foil is an exclusive alternative of the fact. Explanatory knowledge to has the following form. The variable x takes the value x instead of its prime because y has the value y instead of y prime. We can make it more important and we say something like p because the uh, golden process in p takes the way of processing p instead of p prime because it is embedded or is in the shape in or by body p with the morphological models in p instead of p. Time. So we, we need, I need so we need some way to compare different morphologies, changing morphologies and find, find the, the different uh, they make some difference in the cognition and not in the cognition processing underlying the cognition. However, changing the morphology of the system is not easy. Uh, yeah, easy task. And uh, I follow up one of the authors of the contrast contractual transformation, the Vedicosti. We write the same contrastive setting also works in comparative research, which is our second option if experiments are impossible. And I look on the examples from biology, sometimes very exotic examples, and using them as nature experiments to testing the influence of the morphology on the process of computation and the line cognition. I developed in my human body ideas for the kill and bad there. And actually, the one by all the authors, they write the body structure, creates constraints, and also the to narrow control. And I, in my previous paper, we proposed to differentiate the body as a constraint and body as a enabling. So there's a negative role of the body, body constraint the possible implications, or enable as positive, it's enable us and give us the opportunity to some kind of solution. Then the main idea of this comparative, of asking this comparative question comes from philosophy. We have three, uh, three different quotations, but for me, the most inspiring is the, the last one, a uh, quotation from uh, Larry Shepard about Mind Connect, where he writes about the relation between body types and 
months, something like So much further that from all that we can tell, the extraterrestrials have minds just like human minds. Do they look like? Can their bodies consist in amorphous falling like blocks of slime material? Can they have masses of tentacles surrounding large hexagonally shaped eye? Might they be whale size carrying themselves about the hundreds of legs, like city bees? Or if they or if they think like humans, must they have bodies like human beings? And the same idea is from the paper or I think the same idea as we can find for, for example uh, French French paper. I forget the first name, but the author is called French, and he writes about subcognitive states in the Turing test, and he also presents some, some similar ideas about the placement of possible placement of sensors and passing the Turing test. Okay, now I move to the more to these comparative studies on the side some uh, com uh, some, well, some different differences of significant difference in different systems. I, uh, I find a very exciting example of my history. And then I discovered also, now this is a quite popular animal, to think about conditions of the And here, come back and compare body structure, visual, uh, visual receptors, types, nervous system, and the kind of processing involved in processing information <coughs> receptors. So, <coughs> The significant difference between visual receptors in humans, for example, and uh, uh, sure when human uh, recognized triochromatic and magistrate is dodecachromatic, and they should have really a stunning, a stunning uh, visual property, but uh, discriminating properties, but they are quite they are quite normal because the processing of this information is a very simple one. They don't combine that information, they only process it directly by parallel processing in their body coding. Therefore, they are very uh, uh, fragile for the uh, visual, uh, visual uh, light uh, uh, illumination. But the processing is really simple one because if they were really more just like in humans, they were a bit too complex, they were a little bit too complex problems, they were not uh, they were, uh, they were too time consuming. But also it's interesting comparing the visual receptors in human and octopus is like octopus or dental and don't have blind dots. So if they have eyes like humans with blind dots, they will be blind in part of the visual field. Second interesting thing, for, for example, the difference is the difference in the body mass, where then humans, because have rigid body, have body mass in certain nervous system. Uh, octopuses, because they don't have rigid body. Very amorphous one. They don't have any body map, but the direct control of the in the uh, end. Uh, okay, this is not the only example. I think the very interesting was finding that in some, of course, I'm not a specialist, so I make a more um, way of looking from the, you know, from the top to this problem. But I, Searching some examples and find a very interesting example from the fish family that he does. Uh, the authors uh, discovered that we constantly found that species using sensor by color fins also exhibited greater mechanical sensory sensitivity, sensitivity, a lower minimum bending ability to elicit the response. In comparison with species under more flexible fins, this result suggests that the sensory physiology can be tuned to the fins mechanics through the adaptation to the mechasensory system sensitivity to finally bending. Uh, that has support the hypothesis that species specific sensory terminals. And this is quite interesting because there is no variance, uh, even though there is size variance between in, in, intra species. This uh, size variance, there was no, it was no influence on the sense of sensitivity, sensitivity but Inter, 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 uh, only interspecies variants have influence. So this could be uh, directly related to the Shapiro idea that the different types of the body have, where the type will be body with different species specific sensory. Okay. There are also studies on humans. Uh, uh, the, the, last, uh, the most interesting was. 
discovering them that we have quite interesting uh, ability. To, when we move our eyes, our eardrums also move in the direction where we look. So the morphology also simplified information is available out there, auditory information, and this move, uh, move precedes eye movement by 10 millisecond in humans. And there are quite extensive studies on the dam in development where the different move, um, uh, where the mobility and posture of the body is changing in the development, change the uh, information available for the children. And really simplified learning process because when the child is really, uh, when the new one is really movable and have only one or three postures, the small changes in the visual field change the direction of the content of the visual. Uh, available this information for the infant. So it's simplified when mother names something, it's more, almost always the child only sees this one thing, nothing more, because his visual field is very narrow. Okay, so we can back to our examples. From the comparative contrast, is here. Uh, for example, I think it's about octopus, it's octopus, and octopus takes the way of the SMP because instead of the time, because it's embedded in the body of octopus with morphological properties. So, with species specific sensory of the phenotypes can be standard and high. <coughs> okay. okay, now I move to the morphological computation. When I started my work on the cognition, I discovered that there is some, there are some authors who try to come, which try to connect somehow uh, and cognition computational approaches to cognition and I start to investigating it. My uh, you know, my actual director is constantly much because constantly telling me that this is not a good idea but then decide. So not much computation the process that occurs in the residence of some kind of processing that explores physical properties of the body. Uh, and there is quite controversy if it's really computational or not. However, we can also ask do this kind of computation can give us some gains, potential gains. So possibly give us some extra resources, uh, more computational power and extra memory as a specific computational proxy. Maybe make our computational more attractive into complexity reduction by problem change of the computations. Uh, and and I know I know this is I'm, I'm set, almost certain this is a bad one, but I don't think that uh, interference reduction stability of the last thing managing failure reduction. Okay, but two examples. The most uh, popular examples is one is the passive dynamic dynamic workers, the purely of, of uh, so purely mechanical devices efficient in working without any control systems, <coughs> but they also work mostly on slopes. Uh, the second one is the robot uh, uh, built by the Chandana Paul for the robot saw, controlled by two perception network with input A and B. One network computates A or B, other one A and B. However, the robot is able to display the sort of function in its behavior. This is, so it was, it was for many, many years the one example of really morphological computation. It's interesting how they cannot do much with them. Uh, with it. Uh, the more contemporary examples come from cell specifications on so the influence of the motor, of the uh, placement of the uh, receptors in the, in the body of the robot or the animal, in reducing and, and in the whole generating some synchronic uh, temporal synchronity or uh, uh, spatial congruity. By and reducing in time the complexity of the signal. Yeah. That was make some simulations and comparison with the robot fly and, and the real fly, and it's, and it's really works. And it's always, it's some, always referred to, to the transfer of chemical information between the environment and the receptors, and it always needs some kind of readout system which deal with this information. And really, really recently, recently uh, and, uh, there is proposed a few autos that we can use in work on a body cognition. Ambassador computation, sorry, just from reservoir. 
Eu sunt de tot în mare sistem. Am primul zis de partea de recurent de network. With widget, it was the part of the recurrent neural network with rigid ways. This part was not learning, but it was used like some kind of reservoir to to make him on on to generate some perturbation in it, and it could be used and can be used successfully, and the quite complex problems can be computed. More efficiently with this kind of reservoirs, and some authors like Ida, Hauser, and Faber propose that maybe you can use different types of of reservoirs, not only part of the neural network, but also for example, bucket of water was also used to propose. So. We we take a differentiate some properties of this reservoir. The more complex reservoir can perform more complex computations. Larger and more complex reservoirs perform the most stable computations. Reservoir can exploit for future linkage and as a kind of short-term memory. Okay, I took some examples. And the original idea of how the colleague was the current connection. And in there are more mass spring systems and that can be used for computations. Okay. However, I, I, I was interested in that idea that the specificity, the difference between typically typically different embodiments can be uh, an except for the definition of the different of, of different type of embodiment. Therefore we can however we can see that the most interesting for us could be specification of reservoir control. However, don't look, don't look like it will be very helpful in my project. And this is more spe speculative part. I in one <coughs> of the so I'm not in the case that not every reservoir can be used for computation with a game. Good reservoirs should be able to separate into the features. And um, the more set possibility of separation, the more larger separability in uh, case of Uh, this set reservoir is, could be used in more uh, game to simulate computation. Therefore, I still think about how we can combine the ideas of body as a reservoir with body as structuring information. Because in the case of reservoir, the body is not structured, but is more computationally effective. But in the case of uh, self structuring, it is structured, but it's not self computational but maybe we can combine and maybe in form of some kind of thread of between body as a reservoir and body as a structural information. Okay. But here I try to answer the question of this free computation on form. This is not computation because the most I was recently uh, trying to say that morphological computations are not com really computations, but only they, they have simplified by decomputational means uh, problem, uh, the problem that the uh, system comes up. However, I, I try to argue that if this part of the system, other part of the, system, the mechanism is computing, then it should be called computational rather than dec than decomputational. Okay, and But the, uh, the last slide, last slide, I propose to uh, change into, uh, the perspective, and maybe we should start from the, some ideas recently developed by Fred Kieser and many, and Yeatley and Kieser with Peter uh, Smith about the uh, uh, coming from the uh, evolutionary research on the nervous system. And the authors uh, uh, describe them the potential source, uh, sources of the, uh, uh, the first uh, stages of the evolution of the nervous system, and they uh, 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 describe the, the primal sh the muscular neural shift, shift uh, uh, when with uh, don't move in purpose way, 
they only, con they only gener generate some uh, random contractions and the nervous system developed in the trying to coordinate these contractions and coordinate the whole the system to moving smoothly in the environment. Therefore, the body, the, the brain, the central system, is not the, uh, is, is the effect of the morphology of the whole system and then maybe this morphological part could be smooth, more smoothly integrated in the whole uh, 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 computational system. And I think such ideas we can find in quite early paper from uh, theoretician of the uh, networks in Stefan Grossberg from the Soviets. And they tried to simulate. It was quite inspired, and he was inspired by uh, Turing ideas and morphogenesis and so on. That's all. Thank you. Yeah.